but we had a bike race in um, Brownsville of what they said was supposed to be 1600 riders coming down um, on the connecting road to us. And the minute it's the race started, it, the, I mean, the heavens opened up. So I'm hoping that they're all gonna be safe. We saw them all ride by in the big giant pack down the road, but was that I think the there's veterans? gonna be a lot. Was that no, the it's, veterans ride? It's called the Overland. Oh. Um, and I think they do it every year. Um, Overland's a, a micro brew that they do up in Burlington. And it's a pretty big race. We've got people like from all over the country and Canada here for it. But um, they got completely rained on today. So I think there's a bunch of really wet bike riders out there. Mm. Hi, Dot. <laughs> Hi. How are you? Good, actually. Excellent. Excellent. And how is everybody? Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. Corey, where are the rest of our musicians? <laughs> Joseph, I think, had to work. Is that right, Karen? I think so. that's what I heard. We got Caitlin and Joe. Where's Andrew? Beyond that, we might have to make our own. <laughs> That'll be fun. <laughs> we can give him a couple more minutes. Yep. Caitlin, it's great to have you. Thank you. It's great to be here. I'm nervous. Oh, you oh, don't. Be nervous. This is the this is the best community to. Yeah. to be uh, sharing in. I think so. Otherwise, I think otherwise, I wouldn't have had the courage to do it. <laughs> God gave you the courage to make an appearance. You can, he can give you the rest of it. <laughs> yep. This is true. Good morning, Anne. We have... Um, I think we still have some folks joining on, so we'll see. We'll see what happens. It's right at eleven right now, so. Okay. Uh, we're, we're waiting for our. Is is John doing the reading, Karen? Yeah, yes. Yeah. yeah. Maybe we have some issues. So we we need to um yeah. Oh. Uh, here comes John. All right. Wow, that's beautiful. Is that his backyard? I don't know. We'll have to ask him. Hello, John. Hi, John. Morning, Hi. everybody. Good morning. How's, things? How's everybody doing? You're doing great. Waiting for 11. It's a sleepy, <laughs> rainy morning and, and cloudy, coolish morning out on this coast. <laughs> Oh, we're, and we're pretty grateful for it. <laughs> last week you were wearing a tank top. <laughs> oh, well, it's beautiful out here today. Uh, Going to be mid seventies, cloudless sky, a little breeze. So nice. we're uh, we're kind of lucky out here so far. That's unlike Seattle, isn't it? <laughs> Changed a little bit over the years, I must say. <laughs> God bless global warming, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know. It was global cooking for us this past week. So mm. I, in, in Vermont's not supposed to be hot, and it's been a pretty darn hot summer. Yeah. That's all right. You'll have beautiful fall colors when the leaves start changing. I hope so. Valid. Yeah. Hope so. We'll I see. That. I miss that up north. I miss that. Yeah, I don't think I could do without it. I mean, Except we have town on it. That change when it gets cooler, but here, but it's nothing like it is up there. Yeah. Great. So, guys, I think we need to get started. It's yep. a little too. We don't have our opening song from our musicians because we don't. Well, well, we do have musicians here, but they have the other plants. Um, How I about if I would, Lisa, would you like me to start with the sacred space? That would be great. All right. Right. So if you all can see the sacred space for this morning, um, 
I did it. I've done it, and I'm going to be lighting the candle. We'll give Andrew a minute to get on. Um, hey, Andrew, I'm going to do the sacred space, and then maybe you can start us off with a song, if that's okay. Absolutely. Sounds great. All right. Um, so the candle I wanted to light this morning is for Afghanistan um, and all of the folks over there who are over there directly trying to get out for those who are affected by the violence over there and for all of our veterans on this side of the world who are mourning what's happening over there. So I'll go ahead and light the candle. Lisa, if you want to mute all. That's, I'm working on that. Thank um, you. Andrew, uh, Andrew, you'll have to unmute. Hi, everyone. Um, I guess to uh, add upon what Karen was just talking about, um, about you know what, what happened this past week, um, I'm going to play America the Beautiful. Um, which I think is a very fitting song. All right, here we go. everyone thank you let's see spirit of welcoming who is doing that for us this morning i can do that we're we're welcoming everyone who's come this morning thank you so much for being on this would not be the same it would not be at all actually without everybody who's here um, and I'm delighted to see all your smiling faces this morning. Um, hi, Dio. Oh, it looks like little Dio might be in the background there. Good. Okay. Um, and I don't know, Dio, do you have a song for us later? Should we put you on deck? Maybe. Okay. You think about it. <laughs> if you have one, just put it in the chat. Sounds good. All right, Lisa. All right, we are now ready for our opening prayer. You need to unmute first. Okay. All right, got it. Okay. Uh, this is a prayer. I don't know who wrote it, uh, but it comes from my mother's little book of prayers. And uh, it's one that I think applies as it always does, but maybe especially right now. When I behold the problems of our world, O oh Lord, I pray not to be tempted to quick answers. When every tongue declares a different truth, when every people praises its own righteousness, let me pause before I speak or praise or hope. Let me look inward, seeking to discover eternal truths implanted there by thee. Truths greater than those heard in the outer multitude of voices and of words. And let me remember always that to be loud is not to be right. To be strange is not to be forbidden. To be new is not to be frightful. Thus, let me find truths true to thee, that I may live with them and thee and myself in peace. 
Amen. All right, it's time for our prayer and welcome. Is anyone assigned to that? So I will start off with, are you churched or unchurched? A seeker, a cynic? A sinner or a saint? Are you gay, straight, or otherwise? Rich or poor? Healthy or sick? Lost or found? If you answer yes to any of these, you are welcome here. Let us practice together. Um, our next uh, is a, just a quick check-in. Does anyone have anything they'd like to say or, or discuss at this moment? We'll do another sharing after the message, but right now, just anything in general? don't see any hands up. Okay, Dio, unmute, please. I just want to say this has been a joyous week as I commenced on my new job and just to really be able to just get in there and learn and get ready for our kids um, coming um, starting on Monday. Um, you know, at first, you know, like I said, it, it was hard going into a whole new system and really just being um, a part of something different, but I really think, you know, I always say God is a funny God, but I really think this is um, where I'm supposed to be at, um, just to know being here with these kids. And there's always going to be something that's going to stop us or try to keep us from being where we need to be and what we're doing. But we have to stay steadfast, strong, and unmovable in the word and within ourselves, and believe more in ourselves that we can be uh, what we can be in this world. And again, that contributes to this ministry that we continue to be in um, every Sunday, the power that just transcends from each and every one of you that we all get touched even now. And it's because of you guys. And I see them smiles. I know you guys want to smile. I know you feel that love. And this love is genuine. Trust me. When it is, you just feel it all over the place. And even the ones who are coming in the first time, you feel that love, that openness that just comes. And that's all from our higher power and us coming together. So I just wanted to share a little bit of my love with you guys to get y'all going and fired up for the service. And we're just gonna continue to have a joyous time because people, guess what? You don't have to be in a club just to have fun because God, you can have fun with God too <laughs> and, and dance and, and sing and do all those wonderful things right here together, safely and in love. Peace. Dio, thank you so much for those words. That was wonderful. Is there anyone else that would like to share anything right now? Okay, um, let's move on to a, a song. And Caitlin, are you ready? They can see us. Zoom with them now. It's a Zoom service. Okay. Tell me that I love. Um, yeah, okay. I, I, I do want to preface this by saying that while Joe is an excellent guitarist, I am not a singer. So just uh, bear with me here. Someday I'm gonna learn the 
best words to talk. Gonna search and find a better way to walk. I'm gonna spit and polish my whole rock match itself till I get rid of every single flaw. I'm gonna be the world's best friend. Gonna go around shaking everybody's hand. I'm just an old chunk of coal now alone. But I'm gonna be a diamond someday. Well, I'm just an old chunk of coal now alone. But I'm gonna be a diamond someday. Yay. Okay. <laughs> that, was, that was wonderful. Um, Thank you. Awesome. That was so awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Pat, you're on with our words of insurance. You need to unmute. Did I lose Pat? She was right here. Oh, there she is. You need to unmute. Oh, I had to figure out how to do it. There you go. Um, okay. We are a non-monetary church. We do not ask for money. We ask for other ways, like we used to be able to have a pass around a rock or a shell, but instead you, there's other ways of praying and just asking for help. That's it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. John, can we get the scripture this morning? Yes, we can. Giving. You got muted again. All right, here. Working my techno magic. Bear with me. I got to find what I'm supposed to read. Sorry about this. Here we go. Uh, okay, got it right here. Uh, this is uh, Mark um, 27 through 34. They crucified two rebels with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by hurtled insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, so you who are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, Come down from the cross and save yourself. In the same way, the chief priests and the teachers of the law mocked him among themselves. He saved others, they said, but he can't save himself. Let this Messiah, the King of Israel, come down now from the cross that we may see and believe. Those crucified with him also heaped insults on him. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, My God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? That's it. Thank you, John. <clears throat> it was a great, great reading. Um, and I, I just wanted uh, to reflect on this passage, uh, I'm not sure how, how hard it is for some of you, but it, it's always been a difficult passage for me, um, and particularly the end. And at three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And I wanted to draw, uh, and, and uh, Dio just reminded me, now that he's in the midst of all that kid energy um, uh, reminded me um, of, you know, what we've actually on and off been talking about the last few weeks, um, which is the wisdom of children, the wisdom of the child. And I ask, um, as I reflect on this passage, um, I ask us all just to think about the child that dwells inside each one of us um, and to think about it not uh, 
as a sign of weakness, which the world often sort of sees children as, um, but of power and strength. Several weeks ago, uh, throughout the day, I was feeling lousy. By the time dinner came, <clears throat> I wasn't getting any better. And unlike me as it was, I didn't want to eat anything. Finally, by about eight o'clock in the evening, buckled over in my chair, I told Natalie that I thought I should go to the ER at the hospital. And I glanced over at Chloe, my almost 12 year old, and she looked terrified. Probably most almost 12 year old girls watching their dads in pain would have reacted just as Chloe did, distraught and terrified. In pain as I was, I didn't see her quietly disappear down the stairs. And it wasn't until I got to the front door that I sensed she was somewhere behind me. Turning around, I went back into the family room in the basement where I saw what looked like a limp blanket rumpled in the corner. Then it moved and whimpered in the dark. And I heard a desperate cry. The following day, Natalie told me that after I'd gone out to the car, Chloe cried out to her mom, help me, help me, and fell into Natalie's arms. As it turned out, it was a kidney stone, one millimeter in size. Though I'd had one before, according to the nurse, this one justified the pain. In any case, when the CAT scan came back, the stone had moved away from my bladder. And a little after midnight, Chloe and Natalie returned from home to pick me up. When I was a kid, and then when I was in seminary, and even recently, I've had a hard time thinking about Jesus crying out to God, why have you forsaken me? I thought Jesus was God's son, I'd assumed, who was perfect in his faith. I thought Jesus was the man with the plan for whom doubt was a foreign language. And now in these five words, was that perfect faith undone? Why have you forsaken me? Chloe's cry to Natalie allowed me to hear Jesus's cry in a way I'd never heard it before. Under a blanket, feeling helpless to do anything but cry for help, Chloe generated the energy and truth spoken from the lips of Jesus. Life and death are serious matters that demand our ultimate attention. But the nature of creation also reveals that we are never alone. Whenever we cry out for help, we cry out to someone or something else. And however futile we think our cry is, by our cries, we are heard. My misunderstanding of Jesus's cry to God came from a misunderstanding about faith. Faith does not come as certainty, as knowing what will happen. Faith is knowing that in our, in our desperate cries, there is a God who is listening. I even wonder if the more desperate the cry, 
the more clearly the cry is heard. The greater the need we feel to cry out in our heart or through those who need us, the more clearly speaks the truth that we are not alone and that we will never be alone. Some of us identify the listener as God, for others it may be a friend, while for others who believe no one's listening, still they are crying out. Whether atheist or not, by the nature of creation, we are never alone. Even when we cry that no one is there to listen or to help us, our hearts and minds know better that there is a listener whom we might recognize as God. And so Chloe, more than me, the wise child that she is, knew not only to cry out, but to recognize there had to be someone who listens and who will help. And I'd like us maybe to think together for a moment um, about this in the context of why we gather each Sunday and why we read poems and why we say prayers and why we share stories of our lives. We know somewhere down deep no matter how bad it gets, we have a story to tell. And here we are, living to tell our story in the midst of one another, knowing there is always someone listening, someone listening with the ears of God. So, I thought, you know, if anyone wanted to share anything, um, any, any way that might have resonated with your experience, either of faith ways or something that happened in the last week or month or year, that this might be an opportunity by unmuting, I guess, right? I'll share something. Um, as everyone knows, a few months back, I got, um, never remember what it's called shingles shingles and along with um a rash was this terrible pain in my side which was very much like having kidney stones because at first the pain was there before the rash showed up so we, we thought it was like kidney stones and i remember being on the floor in so much pain and praying to god asking them why do I have this? Why are you doing this to me? Almost blaming them. So in a way, that kind of reminds me of, of what John read. Um, you know, why have you forsaken me? Where? What is this? I really felt I was being punished for something. Um, but I got through it. And and now I can talk about it. And it's, it, it, it's sort of a character building kind of event. But um, it, it did make me realize um, that it happened for a reason. I mean, I fully know what that reason is, but it did happen. Thank you. That's great. Does anyone else want to share? Christina. I don't know how relevant this is, but um, Yesterday, my dad was watching CNN, and he watches CNN a lot, and they were talking about how many people just in the state of Florida that was in the hospital. Um, there's 150,000 people that are in the hospital now with that new Delta variant, COVID. So I'm in my room, and I'm watching TV, and he comes, and he walks down the hallway and stands at my doorway and says this to me. Well. In that context, I kind of blew it off. I, you know, I just said, oh man, that's, that's really sad. 
But on the other side of it, my dad is a Democrat. I mean, totally a Democrat. And my sister and her husband, who live now live in the park from his help, buying, you know, getting them a house so they could buy a house here. He, the, our political views are different. Like my dad and I are similar, not the same, similar. And my sister and her husband are Republican. He's an ex-Marine. Well, tomorrow is their year's anniversary being in the park and being in Florida. So I made a suggestion on Friday and I said, dad, why don't we have them over for dinner on Sunday? Because my sister has to go to work on Monday. <laughs> he went to the store, he bought all the stuff for the salad and the baked mac and cheese that he's going to make. And he comes back and he's like, I don't know if I want to have them over. And I'm like, why dad? Because of their political views. Well, I thought about it for a couple hours in the afternoon yesterday. And I went back to him and I said, you know, dad, everybody's different. Everybody has a different opinion about whatever the subject is. And I said, you cannot let that stop you from having them over here. And I think what I said changed his mind because he's supposed to call them today and invite them over for dinner tonight. <laughs> so I just want to say how grateful I am that I had the wisdom and the, the words that God gave me to talk to him to get him to change his mind on, you know, because that would have caused a, it would have caused a rift if he had said anything that he would have regretted later. So that's basically it. I'm looking forward to having dinner with my sister and her husband tonight here at the house. And I just want to thank God that I was able to like detour the situation as far as, and I told dad, I said, you got to let that go. They're a family. Let's just let's do this and be good about it. Thank you. Thank you. That's great. Anybody else? Ann. Hey, Ann. Okay. Hi, everybody. I haven't been here for a while. It's really, really good to be here today. I feel uh, led by God to be here. Um, I've been struggling for a long time with uh, trauma memories, and it leads me to come to God on my knees often. Um, and even when I get heard by God, I still, the next day, I wake up and it's like I'm back in the trauma. And it takes me almost the whole day to come back to, to being able to pray again. My days are basically spent that way. But anyways, I finally realized that um, it's just like God is knocking on my door, just always knocking on my door. Where do I go at the end of the day? I don't go to the bar or, or some other place you know, like that. I go back to God. So I said, okay, let me just, you know, see what does God want me to do every morning? Usually I start in the morning by trying to pray. I usually remember my dream and that gets me into the trauma again. And or by the time I get to God, it's later on. But, you know, I, I, last night I was like, what can I do to open my day in a way that really um, keeps me in that space of knowing that I'm heard and helped? And, and it came to me after a bit. I just listened. I didn't give myself an answer. Just like, let God tell me. And it came to me that I could start with five gratitudes just as soon as I wake up. Anything that comes to mind, five gratitudes. So I did that. So I finally remembered this morning when I woke up after a bit. Oh, yeah, my gratitudes. And they just kept pouring out of me one after the other, you know, from every sector of my life, my inner child, my child self that got traumatized first. And, you know, she was like, um, thank you for the new day, you know, or thank you for pancakes, you know, or, you know, and then other parts of my life had something to thank. And I wasn't even leading it myself. I was just saying, wow, this is keeping me really aware of the goodness of, of life, no matter what. So, so I just wanted to share that today. Thank you. And that's great. Anybody else? I think we're there, Lisa.
Lisa, you muted. Got it now. Um, Dio, you prepared a song, so unmute. And let's do it. How you doing again, everyone? The song that I have is I Give Myself Away. We haven't played it in a while. Hopefully my grandson will be singing some words behind me, um, accompanied by um, Andrew's illustrious um, piano playing. Um, we're gonna just bring it live and direct for you here. don't speak this much during the service but it's out of my comfort zone as usual i just want to pray for the people of Af afghanistan our servicemen and women i also want to pray for the people in louisiana they're going to be dealing with some hard stuff today 
Thank, thank you, thank you, Christina. Um, anyone else? Yeah, John. I, uh, I just want to pray for the people who hold so much anger in their inside themselves and, and, and let it spew upon others so unnecessarily. Um, and we all have experienced it and seen it and it, uh, and it hurts, but, um, but I can't imagine the pain that these folks are going through, uh, in their, in their fury. And so I just ask God that, uh, he might, uh, rain a little grace down upon them and, and, uh, and give them a little more comfort in their in their tough times. Good job. Yeah. Little deal has something to say. Yeah. Pray for the kids that are going back to school. Yeah, and we pray for the teachers as well. <laughs> that's for sure. Little deal, that's a good one. We got to remember that. That's a good one. And hopefully, um, God hears our prayers. Um, does anyone else have any more? Or no? who would like to lead us in the Lord's Prayer? Let's all unmute. I can start off. Okay. Our Father, uh, who art in heaven, heaven. In heaven. Oh, oh, be thy name. Be thy name. Thy kingdom, thy kingdom come, come. I will be I will done, done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive, and forgive us our trespasses, as, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Give us this temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy kingdom, power, power, and glory forever. Amen. <laughs> Okay. This brings us to our time of communion. Right. So I just would like to have everybody take a big deep breath because this is our time of communion. It's a time when knowing that violence and death awaited, Jesus comforted his community with the breaking of bread, which is his body for them. And by passing his cup around to them, knowing that it would be his blood shed for all of them. Knowing that his cries would be heard by God, his father, in the midst of chaos and unknowing, Jesus blessed them by his presence, overcoming the darkness and turning it into light. Amen. Um, offering. Who's doing our offering this morning? Chris, can I get you to do the offering? You certainly can, and I will just uh, draft behind uh, Pat's wonderful uh, offering uh, and just um, remind us all uh, that the greatest gift we can possibly give to one another and to God uh, is not money or stuff. Uh, it is ourselves, our, our spirits, our hearts, our hands. Uh, and that finally, when we give ourselves uh, away, we receive the abundance of God. Uh, and so let us all just remember in the coming week that we are living offerings 
And then when we go out the door this morning, we go out into a world that needs us and that what we have to give is inexhaustible because it is in God. And so let us be courageous in our giving in the coming week so that we might be as full as we could possibly be. Amen. Amen. Uh, Leo, I, I think this is a good time for the doxology. I know it's a little out of order, but something about an offering and doxology go together. I got gotcha. you. Uh, everybody can just sing with me. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Blessings. Thanks for the assist, little man. Thank you, Dion. Thank you. So, we're going to follow a song with a song. Um, who has a closing song for us? Maybe Andrew? I sure do. Right. Um, and I know there's a lot going on in the world right now with, you know, the, our troops and COVID and there's, there's a lot of um, hectic stuff going on, but I guess um, I just want everyone to be reminded that God um, has us all in his hands. Thanks, everyone. Love it. Upbeat. Um, so this brings us to the close of our service, and we are going to do uh, the benediction. Um, and just, to let, just to let everyone know, after we're done with this, I'm going to keep this um, meeting going for a while so we can all chat. Anyone who would like to chat and share with each other will we'll, we'll do that. OK, Karen. Thanks. Sorry for my dog barking in the background. So hang on one second. I have a quick story to share. Uh, oh, Karen's back, but I'm going to okay, share. Okay, sorry. Go ahead and share it. Okay. Um, so I was uh, I was at the airport this week and I saw um, so someone about my age with a black t-shirt on and in white text, it said, you're muted. And all I could think of is we need to get that for Lance. Uh, <laughs> just do one of these in the middle of the service. I think he'd uh, really appreciate that. So uh, we should get him one. You should all get one and do it when he does that. That would be great. <laughs> I love it. We'll get it to him for his birthday. So this would be coming to our the close of our service today. And I thank you again for all the music and everybody joining in. So this is a blessing from Jan Richardson, and it's called Blessing in a Time of Violence, which is to say this blessing is always, which is to say there is no place this blessing does not long to cry out and lament, to weep its words in sorrow, to scream its lines in sacred rage, which is to say there is no day this blessing ceases to whisper into the ear of the dying despairing the terrified which is to say there is no moment this blessing refuses to sing itself into the heart of the hated and the hateful the victim and the victimizer with every last ounce of hope it has which is to say there is none that can stop it none that can halt its course none that will still its cadence none that will delay its rising 
none that can keep it from springing forth from the mouths of us who hope, from the hands of us who act, from the hearts of us who love, from the feet of us who will not cease our stubborn, aching, marching, marching, until this blessing has spoken its final word, until this blessing has breathed its benediction in every place, in every tongue. Peace, peace, peace. Amen. Amen. Thank you. This concludes the service today, but we will stay on so that people can chat and say hi to each other. And so you can all unmute or say goodbye if you need to go. And Caitlin, please look at my chat the chat for my email address so you can send me yours and I'll send you a link to the recording. Thanks Please. everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Good job everybody. Thank you. Thank you Caitlin. Have a great and day. Hey, everybody. Thanks Caitlin and Joe. You're welcome. Thank you. Thanks Andrew. Wonderful. And Dio, thank you so much for all the music. Hey little Dio. When uh, when do you go back to school? All right. I think you may have missed them. I think they signed off. Monday. Monday. Oh, are you excited? That's tomorrow, have right? Fun. <laughs> wow. Hey everyone. Lesson next week. Tina. Have a Hi, wonderful Tina. It won't let me leave. <laughs> it won't let you leave. <laughs> yeah, I keep pushing the leave button and it's not. Uh, it's a little slow, I think. Have a good, uh, have a great Sunday, everybody. Go in peace. You too.